Hoka, we've got a shoe to talk about. <laughs> Ginger Runner. What's up, everybody? Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner here for another GingerRunner.com review. I've got a V-neck on, and I mean business. We will be looking at, studying, and reviewing the Hoka 1-1 Conquest. Oh, yeah. Notice how I said Hoka 1-1? That's because Hoka One One is now Hoka 1-1. Since the last set of Hoka reviews that I have put up, they have put out branding material that has changed the pronunciation to be Hoka 1-1. Made it easier for everybody, standardized it all. From here on out, I shall just refer to them as Hokas. Spread your wings and fly. All right, so today we have a pretty cool shoe, a new shoe in their 2014 lineup. This is the Conquest, a road shoe from Hoka, designed with some new technologies to really produce a cushioned, fast, road shoe. Built to go the long miles, built for those endurance races, marathons, maybe even beyond. And I'll tell you what, it does exactly what it is designed to do. I do have a couple of qualms with it. Of course, I'm the ginger. I have qualms with everything. But with all Hoka's, there's a number of things that I like and that I appreciate because they are doing things that other shoe companies are not doing. And really, you have to put your foot into a Hoka to know what I'm talking about. It's a completely different experience from a lot of shoes. With that maximal cushion, which is said to reduce wear and tear on the body, help you recover quicker. It's really comfortable for those long rides. So let's dig into the Conquest. Let's find out what the ginger likes and dislikes. Let's do this. Things that I like. The R-Mat cushioning. Now this midsole material is, is their new technology called R-Mat. Actually, don't know what that stands for. Really mushy and tough? Doubt it. So it's this nice, soft, but yet responsive midsole material that they're using now that I believe is similar to the midsole material that they're using in the Rapa Nui 2, which I've recently reviewed. I like it. It doesn't allow your foot to really sink into that shoe and get lost in there or even like fold over itself. It's responsive. It's a little bit stiffer than what you would expect, but it still allows you to have a nice soft cushioned ride. And as I have run more in this shoe, that arm mat has loosened up a little bit and has changed the ride a little bit for the better. Durability. Another aspect of the arm mat as well as the shoe itself is it's durable. You'll notice the outsole is actually primarily midsole material. All that white area is the Armat midsole material, and obviously it's not really wearing too bad. I have a little bit of lateral wear here on the heel, which I normally do in all of my shoes, and a little bit of wear up here in the toe box. Other than that, it's holding up great with about 40, 50 miles on this shoe. There's no fraying, there's no seam splitting, there's really very little wear on that outsole. Seamless upper. The upper, inside, zero seams, really nice. Love that, you have nothing to interfere cause blisters, any of that kind of stuff. It's good. Stable platform. A problem that I've had with other Hoka's in the past, primarily the Rapa Nui 2, is that the midfoot and forefoot aren't really wide from the midsole down. So what you end up getting is a high platform that's not necessarily a stable platform. What's great about this particular shoe is that the midsole material begins to expand out ever so slightly when you're compressing it, and it forms this nice, stable platform. Protection. Not only do you have a thick midsole material in the 20 plus millimeter range, but you also have a nice upper that is pretty thick and pretty durable but it also allows tons of protection all around. So if you did want to take this shoe onto some nice buffed out single track, you don't have to worry about those random rocks popping up. The Meta Rucker technology. Hoka is known for this. It's essentially when you strike in the midfoot, the shoe itself is designed to help roll you forward. And with this R-mat midsole material, it gives you a nice snappy toe off as well. It's a smart technology that allows you to be more efficient with your gait and helps guide you in the right direction. Now for things I dislike about the Conquest. Heavy. 11.8 ounces. Compared to Hoka's that I have reviewed in the past, that is a pretty high number. I've run in Hoka's that are around the 10 ounce range, and I know that there's more Hoka's coming out that are even less than that, far less than that. So I have to call them out. This is a pretty heavy shoe, despite the fact that the Armat technology is a midsole material that is lighter than previous versions of their EVA. They say lighter and more resilient, but man, we're talking about a road shoe that while it can go the distance, is still gonna weigh nearly 12 ounces. The shoe itself, is pretty damn stiff. Now what you're getting is this midsole that is extra thick, so it's gonna allow your foot to kind of roll automatically in that EVA cushioning, but without that natural flexibility in the shoe itself, you're gonna have to wait for it to break in to begin to feel some of that flexibility. I am getting some of it now in the 40, 50 mile break-in period, but it took a long time and I still wish it was more flexible. Heel counter. The heel counter itself is plastic, thick, dense, hard. Not enough flexibility, bad. Which dovetails into my next dislike thick upper. The upper, while welded, seamless, and has some additional nice qualities. It is thick 
and dense. It doesn't flex very well. The Bondi has a much more flexible upper, much more adaptable upper, works well with your foot. This one in particular just gets really stiff. You have to break it in for a long time, and even then it's not super comfortable, nor is it thin, nor is it breathable, so it's a bit of a problem. Narrow, this is a problem that I've had with a lot of hokas recently, is that the forefoot and midfoot area just tends to be a little too narrow for my foot. I don't get a ton of toe splay. I will say the more you wear this shoe in, the more that it does begin to flex out a little bit and allow your foot to conform to the shoe, but it took a long time. Time, and I can't wait for them to come up with a nice wide forefoot hook. When is it gonna happen? I want it. And finally, laces. As has been the case with most of the Hoka's that I've received, they come built in with a quick lace system, which just causes so many problems. It malfunctions, it loosens, it doesn't stay super tight where you need it to stay super tight. So what I do is I cut that out, and I have to give them credit for including a set of regular laces, and I put those in. So that's it for this slide. So I have to say that I actually really like this shoe. I've been using it a lot lately for recovery runs, for long road runs or training runs. It does the job that it is built to do and that's provide me with some cushioned, long runs. For those of you who have not tried Hoka's, give them a shot. It's cool to see the direction that Hoka's going in and the new 2014 models. I'm really excited to see some of the new shoes that they're coming out with, the Huaca, for example. If that's how they pronounce it, I'm going to pronounce it wrong regardless. But I got to get out with the points, so let's do this. Quality. I'm gonna give it four out of five. Yeah. I think the shoe itself is good quality. It's extremely durable. The upper is holding up really well. The outsole is holding up very well. It just took some break in time. I think that the width of the toe box needs to be fixed. I think the laces need to be fixed. I think the upper is a little bit thick, as well as the shoe being a little heavy. But the build quality, the materials, Hoka's really upped their game. I'm really excited. Comfort, again, I'm gonna give it four out of five. This is a strong four out of five. I think this is a really good long distance road shoe, specifically for those of you who are looking for a maximalist ride. Those of you who are used to something a little bit more minimal, you're gonna have to get used to the maximal idea. Those of you who are totally against it, I encourage you to open your minds to it. Price, I gotta give it two out of five. Unfortunately, at $170, that is at the max of my price range for a shoe. It is just so expensive. I do understand that it is more shoe and it will last you a long time since it is so resilient and it is lasting me many, many miles with very little wear and tear. I will say it's a borderline three out of five, but because it is so expensive and it will take people time to save up money to purchase, unless you're rich, in which case, buy me more pairs. $170 is a lot to spend. Finally, looks, I actually think this is one of Hoka's best looking shoes. Four out of five. It comes in a variety of colors. I really like the neon green yellow color. This red color is not bad either. I really enjoy this. Compared to earlier Hoka's, I gotta give them some bonus points because it is good looking and I like where they're going with their design. I think they're doing good things. So that brings our total to 14 out of 20, which is a good score. I definitely think those of you who are in the maximalist cushioned realm or who might be interested in trying them out for the first time, definitely check out the Conquest, specifically for running roads. It's a fun shoe. And I know the Hoka Files, Hoka Files? Swear by it, they're loving it right now. So that's it for today's review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Have you run in the Hoka Conquest? I know it's been out for a while. If you have, let me know in the comments below what you think of it. What do you guys think of the Maximalist movement? Is it sticking around for good? Have you run in any other Maximalist shoes? And if you have, which ones are they? And do you like them? Don't forget to like, favorite, and share this video. It's the only way people are going to find out about The Ginger Runner and all my reviews. And also subscribe to this channel on youtube.com slash The Ginger Runner. I'm on all the social networks over on Twitter at The Ginger Runner. On Facebook, facebook.com slash The Ginger Runner. On Instagram, at Ethan Newberry. And of course, gingerrunner.com for all things great and ginger. And do not forget that every single Monday at 6 p.m. Pacific, I do a live show where you can interact with me and my guests in the chat room right here on this YouTube channel. And it is fun. It is a blast. I enjoy it. And I drink beer every Monday, 6 p.m. Pacific. That is it. I hope you guys are getting out there training hard, racing harder, and partying the hardest. I know I am. We'll see you guys next week for two more videos. Can you believe it? It happens. <sighs> Gotta breathe. All right.